to heat up your frozen dinners, grab your TV tray, and settle in for another episode of The Plus Platoon, your podcast for all things Disney Plus, brought to you by Disney Plus fans. Watch along with us every week as we cover all the new, the old, the good, and the bad on Disney Plus. So put down that remote, don't touch that dial, and welcome your fabulous Plus Platoon host. everyone. Welcome to the Plus Platoon. We're a Disney Plus fan podcast that gives honest, spoiler-filled reviews of movies and shows on Disney Plus. We look at new releases, coming attractions, and we'll even go back into the vault to revisit some of the classic Disney that's on the platform. Make sure you're subscribed and you will never miss a moment. I'm going to bring in my girl, Kate. Kate, good to see you this evening. Good to see you too, Derek. How are you? Uh, it's February and I'm a teacher, so we're into the slog. <laughs> Are you counting down the days till summer yet? No comment. Well, especially <laughs> because, like two days after the kids are done, I'm heading to Orlando. So, ah, attaboy. Yep. Next, we've got Peter. Pete. Hey, everybody. Hey. I'm doing good. I'm looking forward to talking about this movie as the mm -hmm. only one that's on the theaters, I think. Yeah. Maybe that made a difference. I so, cheated. and Last but certainly not least, we've got Steve. Steve's still in hey, camp down there. Yes, it's our last day. So, Yay. <laughs> answer Kate 88 days what? <laughs> of school left. 88 days until summer. Vacation. I thought you meant there was 88 days of him having COVID. I was like, no, I no, think no, no, no. to go. No. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have that many, which is nice. So, guys, if you have not already, please. Like, subscribe, share. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter at Plus Platoon. We are here every week. And guys, if you're out here watching us, we're glad you're here with us too. It's We've got a very loyal following and we wouldn't do this if you weren't watching. So that being said, this week we are watching the newly released Wakanda Forever. Um, follows the story of Wakanda after uh t'challa has died t'challa dies in like the first two minutes of the movie um because obviously chadwick boseman lost his battle with i believe it was colon cancer yeah um yeah as they were like they had written the movie and were getting ready to start filming and no one knew he was sick and wow. he he passed away so they had to completely redo the movie so that's why feels a little rushed it is but the movie fo really focuses on processing that loss and processing the grief and what Wakanda is going through now that the world knows they have all the vibranium and uh, aren't really wanting to share the vibranium. And then they get attacked by the water people who apparently have vibranium of their own. And long story, really, really, really long story shorter. Um, the two, uh, the two countries end up fighting each other. Uh, his sister ends up becoming the new Black Panther, and ends up showing mercy to the head of the god that is leading the water people, and ends up forming an alliance between their two countries. Sort of. <laughs> uh, tentative. They agree not to kill yeah. each other then. How about right. that? Yeah. Yeah. So um I'm gonna ask, and I'm gonna start with Pete on this one. What about this was worthy of Wakanda? What what was great about this movie? So uh again, I saw it in theaters. Uh it's a very long movie, and there's a lot in it. And so I wouldn't say everything is worthy, but I do like I did like. Um, you mentioned like the processing of grief and especially what Shuri goes through, but there's also other characters that go through it in different ways. And um, I always look for something different in my Marvel movies, something that's just not telling me the same story over and over again, which are basically what these movies do on a, on a broad level. But <clears throat> what can you do that's, that's different. And to me, one of the things Wakanda or these movies are different is present this 
entirely different culture. But on top of that, as I said, it, it was really a story of grief and how people handle that. Um, it really honored Chadwick Boseman and T'Challa very, very well. Um, I also liked most of the A plot, which was the um, the conflict between uh, the I don't I don't remember what their tribe is, but the 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 formerly the Mayans <laughs> or something yeah. like that uh, that had moved. It wasn't it isn't Atlantis in the in the books. It's Atlantis or in the comics. It's Atlantis. And so they went to, they called it something else, but it's still Namor. Uh, they still called him Namor. Um, but uh, I did I did like the the a plot pretty well. I thought um, when they stuck to that, it was a pretty good story. And I did overall enjoy the movie a lot. I, I, I was a little disappointed in the wrap up that like this huge battle. And then at the end, it's like, okay, let's just stop. We're going to, we call it a draw and we're good. Uh, it's kind of like a non-conclusion. Um, but well, that's getting to what I didn't like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, um, so, so that, so overall, you know, as I said, I enjoyed the story. Most of the story, I liked seeing these characters again that we had seen in the previous movie. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, like Akoya Mbaku is is he's a really entertaining character, and he gets he gets uh, some stuff to do in this movie. So I'll stop there. I'll let Steve see if he has anything else he wants to comment on. Um, I'm gonna go on you. I liked how they had um, the queens dealing with with um, the death, the grief through using more of traditions sort of the religious aspect of dealing with it and then sherry the daughter sort of fighting against that and trying to deal with grief in an opposite way um so i liked that part um i liked like you said most of the a plot i liked there was problems with it um it was long very long i guess that's getting into the other part but i did like how they dealt with the grief um like you said they did a nice job of sort of honoring in, a, in some subtle ways to um, with Chadwick. Not so much there. So Derek, what did you think? Um, I liked the fact that other than knowing that the blip happened, you didn't have to have really seen any of the other Marvel movies except for Black Panther. Yeah. Um, realistic, good. realistically. But you, but you definitely needed Black Panther. Oh, yeah. you definitely had to see oh, Black yes. Panther. Yeah. But you didn't really, other than, again, knowing that the blip happened you didn't right. really have to see any of the other marvel movies which was nice it was a um for the most part it was a fairly self-contained plot um within the black panther si series um there are there were very 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 strong hints that we have not seen the last of the water people and wakanda interacting with each other um we also had the Julia Louise Dreyfus character show up from all of, you know, from uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, from basically her collecting all of these anti heroes. She was in this, and I would not be a bit surprised to see her try and pull someone in from this one. But it was mostly her uh, interaction with the um, um, Ross. With Ross, who. No, wait, is that right? Yeah, I don't know. Ever, Everett Ross, it right? Wasn't Chan, it wasn't Chandler. So, uh -huh. yeah. Um, but <laughs> or uh, who, who apparently was her <laughs> ex-husband. So, okay. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, that was... <laughs> took, you, took you a couple I seconds. I didn't then. say it! Pete did! <laughs> that was no, Pete. That was no, all Pete. He said, he said Chandler. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and he was trying to make a friend's joke, and I just followed it. <laughs> yeah, I see. I, I, I thought that was really it. funny! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he the laugh, of course. I, I so <laughs> <laughs> I got your joke, and then they got my my joke yeah. on your joke. Yeah, I, I got his joke. I okay. just, <laughs> just oh, because funny. you said Ross. Oh, okay. Now yes, I, yes. I got it all. Sorry, Um, confused. Anyway, Kate has returned. I like that. It was, I like that it was again. Like that it was self-contained. Like that. They did represent the different handlings of grief that people had showing that not one person handled grief. Not everyone handles grief the same way. I would argue that they tried to show that there was a right way and a wrong way to handle grief, um, which 
we'll get into here in just a little bit. But yeah, I I didn't have to have watched 30 movies to have seen, have understood what was going on in this one. Kate, what was good about this? So I was I was a little bit nervous about this movie because I didn't know how they were gonna handle the pass off, if you will, from Chaswick, Chadwick Bozeman to the next Black Panther. Um, so I went into this a little bit apprehensive on how they were going to handle that delicate change. Um, and it did not disappoint. I love how they addressed it immediately in the first three minutes of the movie. Um, they have him, him pass away. Angela Bassett, who is a goddess, by the way, walks forward and doesn't say a word. And just the look on her face, it was just, and the, just the funeral scene. And you know that all of the grief that was shown in that was very real. Um, it was very, uh, along with watching this movie, I also watched the behind the scenes, um, the, uh, the Avengers assembled, if you will, um, Wakanda forever along with this. Cause I was curious on how they handled the making of this with this being such a, an emotional, delicate, um, <clears throat> topic or, or, or feat to try to, to do, um, and it was talked about that the director approached, is her name, her, <clears throat> is her name Letitia? The, the girl who plays Letitia, Letitia Wright. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he approached her very gently and they talked about it together. And he said, I feel like you are the only person that Chadwick would want to hand this off to. And, um, and it was just approached in such a reverent um, loving, gentle way, as opposed to just saying, ah, you're going to do this now. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I felt like you could really feel that in, not just in the first five minutes, but also throughout the entire movie. Um, there is something about the Wakandan women, not just the warriors, but the Wakandan women. Like I could watch the Black Panther movies, both of them, repeatedly just to watch these fierce women show up in these outfit these costumes that are breathtaking and oh my so God, strong aren't they great so, <laughs> oh my gosh i mean in my opinion i enjoyed the movie i did but the costuming and the makeup like it just you just sit there and you're like oh my gosh these these women are so powerful um that in my is Sh is it Sh Shuri? I feel like I always say her name wrong. Shuri, yep. Mm -hmm. She is probably in my top three favorite superhero characters of the Marvel Universe. And I will say, Kate, I love her. it has been nominated for costume and makeup. For well, costume. And they do talk about how um, they went to different African um, tribes and cultures to to really be authentic and to bring what they were looking for to life. Um, so so what was worthy of Wakanda, in my opinion, the casting was perfect. Um, Letitia's just, oh my gosh, how she went from the first movie being that like playful sister, the smart one to like her care, that character growth to where you see the pain and you see the decision after Ra Ra Ramona dies, that decision of, oh, I am going to step into this now. Like, I am going to find vengeance now. Um, to getting to the end of the movie where instead of killing, oh gosh, what's his name? Namor. Thank you, Namor, um, making the choice. I ag completely agree with you, Pete, that that also... Well, we'll get there, but um, overall, I really enjoyed. I re I in it was very long. It was very long. I will give you that. They could have cut out a decent <laughs> amount, but um, I I just really enjoyed these movies. The um, and, uh, to follow what you just said, uh, Letitia Wright's performance. I feel like I wasn't sure she because I I know before they released it, they didn't. Like they didn't say who the Black Panther was going to be, but come on, you knew who the Black Panther was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, the 
I didn't know if she could handle because really in the other in the in the other movie her her role was kind of one note. She was you know the techie little sister. She was, Q. She was Q. Right, exactly, and to to like take on the big emotional lead, especially when Chadwick Boseman was so good. And and she really did a, a really really good job. I mean, I, I you know I, I don't want to compare him pa- compare her to him. Um, she, she didn't quite reach that height, but um, I I thought she was fantastic. I thought I thought all the cast was was great in their roles. I also found out that um, the girl who played Riri, uh, Dominique, she mm-hmm. actually read for Shuri's character in the first movie. She was one of the final ones to read for. Um, Shuri's character and then they said it's not quite right but we're gonna we're gonna remember her and then they brought her back for this movie so which is interesting awesome okay so we've heard what worked Steve what should have been hit with vibranium what should have been blown up and just what did not work about this movie about 30 minutes (laughs) 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 I would have gone about 45 but yeah um Definitely the length. Um, that's probably the the first issue. I also felt like they tried to do so much in this movie that they lost some focus. There's the grief. There's the main storyline. Um, you had who the new plant back Black Panther is. Um, you have this new group of people, the Telecons. I think I said that right. Um, there was too much. I think that was also. Um, I think the thing with the um shield agents was a li- little too much there um i know derek and i were talking um before we started recording about they're really trying to set up stuff for the for the new phase coming and i felt like they're just trying to do m- too many things um i also did not like the ending um i was not happy with the ending i felt like it was too wrapped up a little quickly so i don't know if i'd necessarily get rid of it but I'd want to change it. Like I think Pete was saying is like, Oh, we're done fighting. Everything's a okay now, (laughs) you know, and we'll get along. I mean, I'm sorry. I come from sixth graders where that's not necessarily true. You don't get a okay (laughs) along the next moment. So, um, yeah, so lots, lots of things there. Um, so those were my things. What do you think, Derek? Um, Well, you touched on it was, you know, Wakanda, it took forever. (laughs) Um, You've got, I agree with the setting it up because you notice how one of the end ending scenes was the, uh, was Namor's, uh, Gal coming to Namor and say, how could you make a deal with these people? And he says, one of these days they're going to come to us looking for help and then we will be the ones in power. And... uh, you can see that coming because they're going to need their help with Kang. I have a feeling they're going to need their going to have to ask for their help with Kang the Conqueror. So again, it sets up going forward. Um, I did not like the fact that the hidden message of you have to deal with grief in one way or it's not healthy. I really have a big issue with that because there is no one right way to deal with grief. Um. And that's good because they made it seem like Shuri did not handle, you no, know, was wrong, was wrong, was wrong until she did it exactly how her mother wanted her to. Which, as someone who has lost people close to you very, very suddenly, there isn't a right way or a wrong way to handle grief. There is grief. Right. So I had, yeah. a big, I had a big problem with that one. Um, Visually, it was a dark movie. I ha- I mean, I like I had to watch this in a room with no lights because mm-hmm. it was there were so many of those scenes, especially especially some of the ones underground, as visually stunning as the first one was, as Black Panther was, this fell very flat for me on that. It did not have the grand sweeping vistas that the first one did because there's only so much water you can see. It yeah. felt it felt like Marvel meets Avatar in part of it. Mm, <laughs> I can see I, that. I saw the blue people and that's all I could think of is why did we, when did James Cameron get here? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 
And J- James Cameron did Underwater Blue People better. Yes. Oh, yeah. He did. <laughs> From what I hear, he did Underwater Blue People better. I have not seen that one, but. Um, did James Cameron also do Titanic? Yes. 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 Um, Never mind. I'm not going to make that joke. Continue. He also did Terminator. So, um, but to me, the biggest problem was it was too long. Yeah. There, there was about. This should have been at least 45 minutes shorter. It should have been a two hour movie, which I know Marvel doesn't like to do, but with not much happening. And I mean, I love some of the, some of the bit players. I love Richard Schiff as the American uh, representative to the UN. Um, fell in love with him as Toby Ziegler on the West Wing. So. Um, yes. Toby. But, but it was just, it did not hold my attention. It did not keep my attention. And other than naming a new Black Panther, not much happened in the movie because the two, there's no, there was no resolution. So, Kate, okay, question what for you, Derek. Oh, okay, I go do ahead. have a question for you. Um, because you're talking about. Um, how you were feeling that they were saying Sherry, how she dealt with grief was in the wrong way. Um, what do you think? I feel it like she was at that sort of that anger denial, denial stage of grief, you know, of how do you think if they had expanded on that, where she had moved on to like a different stage? Cause I felt like she was still very much in the anger mode for most yeah. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. For uh, most the, of the movie, really yeah. the entire movie. Um, I think the acceptance was there. I think, I think it was the anger stage that you're right. She wasn't in, but I also think that they, if they spent so much time, her focusing on her grief that, and I don't remember the seven stages of grief. I don't remember the one that comes after anger. And while Kate and Peter are talking, I'll look it up and, Denial. Denial. Well, I think it's, denial is first. Denial is first. First, and then, there's, first. Yeah. First, and then oh. there's anger. Bargaining. Bargaining. Yeah. Um, the bargaining. I think she was doing a little. Well, she did a little bit of the bargaining with the computer. Mm-hmm. But, but to the final acceptance, she went from anger to acceptance in a heartbeat, or excuse me, in in thirty seconds of of seeing her mother. Yeah. Right. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just, it was. I, I so will like, I, I do like, um, I do like when she um, took the vibranium when she saw Killmonger instead of, of who she expected, sort of the. Yes. Um, but it also, it also solidified to me that, to me, that was the subliminal message that she still had so much hate in her heart for the fact that she was doing it wrong because she saw Killmonger. So, because if she had been doing it right, she would not have seen Killmonger. That was the message I got on that. I would have loved when he's, when you turned and in the end credit scene, you see that, you know, it's his son. Let me tell you about your dad. Let me tell you what I know of your dad. Let me tell you what you didn't know about your dad. Show me something where she is truly onto that acceptance portion. Because all we saw was her 30 seconds of her burning the robe and sitting there with the flashbacks going through her, her visions. To me, if you're truly going to make the grief journey, that's the only part I would have liked more of is seeing her and uh, his wife having sat and talked about him. Having her come in and let the wife sit while he she burns the robe instead right. of this is something I have to do by myself. And so. not even necessarily maybe burning the robe, because that's going back to the traditions that right. it's okay to go off of traditions to deal with grief in your own way. Right. Which again, I think this said was wrong. So yeah, I'll I'll agree with you to a degree that they did kind of make it like her way of dealing with grief was wrong and they shouldn't do it. But I think they still showed 
that how that how she processed that grief and everything like that. I don't think I don't feel like it was completely rushed. And I oh, thought that I thought from the, her from her except from her getting over her anger to the acceptance portion of it in two minutes. You're telling me in excuse me in five minutes of movie time, whatever. You're telling me that wasn't rushed. Well, it's in the anger time. There, there should have been more stuff that was rushed in this movie. Let's be honest. So yes. I don't really have a problem with like having that epiphany that, oh wait, I, I, I can't, I can't be like this. This is not me. This is not the way of our people or whatever. So I, I, I get what you're saying, but I don't 100 percent agree with it. That's fair. And and again, that's you know that's that's a complete fair assessment too. Kate, well, we all have different opinions. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of different opinions, what for you did not, other than, you know, the, the extra bowl of popcorn that you needed to get through this, what did not work for this movie? Uh, well, I, um, you all took it from, you all took what I was going to say. It was very long. It was very, very long. And I personally had a little bit of trouble getting into it. Um, the, <clears throat> underwater scene where you first meet the water people um it just a confused kate came out in very big full force of like uh, what wait what is happening like what wait what and then when at the very beginning when she's like this has to be the wakandans it's the wakandans and i'm like hang on don't you go blaming the wakandans for everything but it, it just took a while for me to get into it um I love it. It just could have been 45 minutes shorter. Not and not 45. It could have been 30 minutes shorter. And it, yeah, it just because when you get to a certain point and your body's like, are we done? Are we done? Are we still are we still doing this? Um, yeah. That was probably one of my biggest. My biggest things is it was just long. I didn't. I wasn't a huge fan of the end of the movie um, because I don't trust it. I don't oh, no. trust uh -huh. it. No, this is this is one movie it. where nothing that you see is real. Right. So, like, as much as I love a happy ending, I'm like, I don't trust this. I don't. I don't. I don't trust this. So, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. But that's me. So, so I want to get into a little more specifics. Okay. Of I because I agree with what everybody said. Um, having seen it in the theaters, I think that the length was less problematic in theaters because sometimes movies are long and you're you're kind of more immersed in it than you are at home where there's other distractions and it's easy enough to be to get bored and uh so i found in the movie theater it didn't bother me that much that it was long but it was clearly long i totally agree with derek's too dark um the first big action scene was all at night and very dark and then all the underwater stuff was very dark. And I remember in the theaters when they got to the last big action scene, the big battle, and it was actually daylight. I was like, oh, my God, thank thank you for putting <laughs> something in this movie yeah. in the daylight. Um, so uh, okay, com completely agree they, with you there. Could they have done that to show that, you know, the darkness of the souls and, you know, so yeah. I don't think Yay, so. Symbolism. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think know so either. either. I don't think so either, but it was just, you know, throwing that out there. But but here's the thing that made to me that made the movie too long. There was two things in this movie that was all about set up for future Marvel, and it was the two things that most needed to be cut. Uh you had all the stuff with Bilbo and Elaine. Yes. Um Julie Louis yes. Dreyfus and um Martin Freeman. <laughs> None of that was necessary to this movie. No. You could have completely cut that story out and you would have cut 15 minutes of this movie and uh, it would have all been fine. I mean, other than to like get him on the side of the Wakandans or whatever at the end, I don't know. It's it, that all seemed like set up for. Oh, um, it was for Phase the. Um, yeah. Um, and then quite honestly, a lot of the stuff with uh, with Riri, uh, Iron, which is, she's eventually going to be Ironheart, which is right. the Iron Man replacement, right. um, which they clearly showed us in this movie. They, they didn't even pretend oh, yeah. <laughs> that she was, that she was something Man else. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and she built an Iron Man suit in like two days, which is crazy to me. But um, forget, forget about that. But like, I, I didn't like, 
yes, she was what was propelling the plot, but you could have easily got that character out of this movie and shortened the movie by another 15 minutes. She and was what was propelling the plot with Wakanda and the other countries. She didn't, yes. I mean, she didn't really, there's so much other, well, and, even no, the, and, but the vibranium, who has vibranium and who doesn't is what was driving the other two countries clash for the most part. No, but, but, sh but, they only they went to find her because Namor, because Namor said, Namor said, you, you bring this girl to us or, or the right, yeah. you bring the inventor to us or we're going to attack your country. Um, and they did anyway. Yeah. And they did anyways. Well, they didn't. Yeah, that's true. Because, well, they captured they her, but then they got her they out. They brought again. it to her. Yeah, and they, they did. attacked him anyway. Yeah. So I, to me, those were the two things. Uh, and. I'm all for, I mean, I do like that Marvel has this ability to tell individual stories and also put this overarching story. But in this particular case, I think it bogged down the story that they were trying to tell. And so I think it would have been, if you took those two things out and just made it a Wakanda story versus the the Namor and the fish I, people. I can't, yeah, the fish people. <laughs> <laughs> the avatar people <laughs> excuse me i think uh it would have been a tighter story it would have you could have cut half hour from this movie easily and i think it would have been a, been a better movie for it which is one thing i liked about the black panther movie is it was a tighter movie it, it was a much tighter movie yes yeah um now speaking of the black panther they chose the new black panther is uh the sister um T'Challa's sister. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to start with Kate on this one. Did they choose the correct new Black Panther? Absolutely. 100%. Like, I, I don't I don't even know who I would have... Yeah, no. 100%. But, like, the, 100%. The, they're, I, I, I even tried to think who would they maybe have picked... And the only options, person that, we'll, we'll see. Well, I wonder if who I'm thinking is. We'll see when we get to your your. Yeah. List, yep. But yeah, hundred percent. There's no one else I would have. <laughs> I would have. What about you, Pete? What do you think? I I think they made the right choice. Um, the other choice is, and it's easy to forget because it wasn't the actual ending of the movie. But at one point, almost at the end of the movie, Mbaku challenges basically shuri as the as as the back black panther but she's not there because she's off in haiti or wherever they are so um he would he would also be an interesting choice as leader but i it wouldn't have worked with the story they were telling so that, i think that was the other person that i was gonna say was Mbaku, yeah. but other than that but that didn't like feel as right as this you right Shuri, yep so. I'm, I'm gonna go with that too yeah. so uh steve um i feel like shuri how the story is written was the only possible choice but thinking more about it i think um okoe the the guard that was dismissed mm. from not doing her job because her passion for wakanda was so there of i think that would have been a nice sort of different path that you don't see normally happening but um just like her speech when she's being dismissed, you could see that she was just like, you took away something I love so much that I put all my heart and soul into. So that's who I would have gone with. Derek, what do you think? Uh, that was option one for me was Okoye. Um, just because, okay, I may have missed this. Does the Black Panther have to be the leader of Wakanda? Um, I don't think it's been established. We don't know that it has to be. It because always has been. It always has been. But Mbaku said he wanted a challenge for the throne. He did not say he wanted a challenge for Black Panther. So in that in that last scene, he said he's challenging for the throne. So right. if they don't have to be connected, that's one option. Um, the one person I think we forget has. And it was made somewhat evident, but I forget was also a warrior and a fighter. Was the is it Nakia? 
his but wife. Yeah. yeah. His wife, she would have been an option because that would have kept it within within the family yeah. until right. young T'Challa is able to take over. Right. So yeah. th- those were my two op- those were my two options as far as either Akoya go with the warrior or Nakia go as, you know, the the marital family, the royal family keeping it in that. Yeah, um, actually, actually, when you say that, the, the, that second option makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure I agree with the Koyo. Um, yeah. Obviously, she's and a fierce fair. fighter and, and everything, fair. but yeah. um, I'm not but, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the Black Panther is the defender of Wakanda. And again, I think historically it's always been all they've also all, always been the leader, but I'm not sure they would necessarily have to be right, which I think is what they're setting up with M'Baku being if M'Baku is going to be the king of Wakanda and Shuri is then um, Black Panther, but she doesn't have to be around Wakanda to still be Black Panther. So, I don't know. It's an option. I mean, obviously, they chose who they chose. They didn't ask any of the four of us. Yeah. But... What were they thinking? <laughs> Not asking us. Get out of here. I know. But... There, I'm just. This just shows that there were other valid options other than it didn't have to be Shuri. And That's again, fair. I know that it's like going in and saying, you know, what would have happened in the later Star Wars in Star Wars Nine if Carrie Fisher hadn't died? What right. would have happened in this movie if Chadwick Boseman hadn't died? Because I have a feeling it was supposed to be a completely different movie. Oh, for sure. I think I think they were still going to have the the name like a Namor story, but yeah, right. it certainly would have been extremely different. Yeah. So, okay. As we always do, we are going to rate this in cups of pixie dust out of five, as they do in Tinkerbell and the uh, Forbidden Hollow. So, Kate. I'm going to start with you. How many cups of pixie dust out of five? Did we watch the original Black Panther? Two weeks ago, you were not here. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't give it a rating. Right. Oh, man, I loved the original. I would have loved him. Um, okay, what do you give it? What do you give What do you give the original? We oh, go- the original is a four at least. Okay. So then I'll, give this one, I'll give this one a three. Okay. I'll give it a three. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, I gave the original a four and a half. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies. This one I did enjoy. I would probably go back to it again, but not that often. I, I could see watching it again in the future, but I don't think it would be one that it's certainly not one that I'd be like, oh, that's on. I got to watch that, you know. Yeah. Um, so based on that, I'm going to give it a three and a half. And I gave the first one a four and a half. So I gave Black Panther a four, and I'm giving this one a three, mainly due to too long, trying to do too much in the storyline. Um, and I think like Pete, I'll watch it again, but probably not going to be coming back to it anytime soon. So a strong three. Derek. Okay. Um, like we are batting a thousand on this one. We are going this a full point less than we gave the original Black Panther. I gave the original Black Panther a three. To me, this is a two. Um, because I will not watch this one again. Um, I might watch the... The only part I might watch is like the scenes where they talk about, hey, guess what's You know, if they come back to us, just to make sure to see what he said when he shows up in the next one. But because he is going to show, they are going to show up later. So we gave this, you know, this is a, you know, our first one with Kate giving it a four. Our first one averaged 3.8 on the original Black Panther. This one averages a 2.8. So, I mean, we literally all gave it one point less. So, yeah. which, <laughs> so which, it's which a, I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Kate, it is. We have got the Disney Plus news this week. What do we got? We sure do. Disney Plus news. Bob Iger announced this week that sequels are in the works for Toy Story, Frozen, and Zootopia. What will this be? Will this be Toy Story 
Six? Five. Five. Can can we can we oh, talk yeah, about this a little videos. bit? Can we kill these, please? Yeah. Uh, Toy Story does not need another. Toy Story uh, didn't and, need Toy Story oh. four. And actually, I'm with, I'm with Kate because they also made a Buzz Lightyear movie, so this will actually be the sixth yeah, Toy Story yeah. movie. Yeah, and it's this, will be not Fro- this will be Frozen three that didn't need a two. And Zootopia, yes, there are more stories to tell, but they've already done that with the little shorts and yeah, I of I, any of them, I would go with Zootopia. I agree. I the Zootopia, yeah. I would like to see another one. The other two. And I love the first two story, two Toy Story movies. I'm not a big as big a fan of Toy Story three as a lot of people is. But I did not. Wrapped it up. Three wrapped yes. it up very well. Four right. felt completely unnecessary. Wasn't. I wouldn't call it bad, but like oh, I would. We we do not need more Toy Story. I'm yeah. sorry. Never let it be said that Disney hasn't ever gone for a cash grab, and that's what this completely feels oh, like. But have me. they have they ever done this? I mean, think about it. What other Nothing because pirates not like sequels. Well, okay, pirates. Yes, this, but this, this is pirates. You know what? Pirates thirteen, pirates fourteen, whatever they're on now. Yeah, um, I mean, pirates had what five? There's five but, pirates right now, I think. Yeah, but animation. I mean, there's never been more than two. Well, anything and, even yeah, and Walt Pixar has no never sequel. been more. Yeah. So, yeah. So no, I, no yeah. more Toy Story, please. No. We don't need Toy Story. I don't mind a Zootopia. Frozen, I, I'm over Frozen, but I've been over Frozen ever since Frozen started because I worked at Disney when Frozen came out and Frozen just took over everything. So right. anyway, moving right along. Wakanda Forever, which we talked about tonight, is the most streamed premiere in the history of Disney Plus based on hours streamed in the first five days. That. I would say that that tracks. That makes sense. That now, that tracks. I don't remember how it did in the box office. I mean, I realized it critically acclaimed, but I don't remember what box office intake was on it. So we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, it did not. It, it did not outperform Doctor Strange two, um, but it did do like almost nine hundred million worldwide. So it was a pretty right. big hit. All right, and last but certainly not least, Disney is looking at trying to save $3 billion in content cost savings over the next few years. The 2023 commitments will still happen, but the volume and content quality will be focused in the future. Which so, means maybe not that? seven Marvel series a year. I, yes. I, I would actually like them to do what... Derek just said less Marvel series, maybe limit to two or three, maybe, maybe even fewer Star Wars series. Yeah, there hasn't. Well, I don't know. Unless they start picking it up, there's really been only like two a year. So that hasn't. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, maybe max at three Marvel series a year. Makes and let's better. get more other content. Um, Because one of the things I was looking at is right. If you look right now in February, there is nothing. Yeah. Once National Treasure ends, there is nothing for the rest of this month until Mandalorian March first. Until, until Mandalorian, mm-hmm. and like, and we we've had we 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 just had an episode where we talked about some of these other shows, Big Shot, Mighty Ducks, and everything like that. More of those type of shows. I'm really enjoying National Treasure. Um, you know, take more chances on a show that doesn't have to be Marvel and all the special effects and everything like that. Tell us more tell documentaries. Us some, Can we get some more yeah, interesting or, documentaries? Or more interesting documentaries. And, Think, you know, to, to make, and the reason I'm saying this isn't it's to have content because yeah. if you're a streaming service, you have to have content all the time. And I feel like a lot of times Disney lags on that. So mm-hmm. spend less high budget stuff and, put it into more mid-budget stuff especially if you're going to try and cut the visual effects like you did with she-hulk right because <laughs> so, yep. there's places to save money and that visual effects are not always it on a marvel movie Mm-mm. So, yeah. okay coming next week we are going to to be coming at you live next week guys is a hundred episodes for us so wow, good job uh, us yeah we've yes. been here a while been here almost two years so we're gonna look back 
as of tonight, we have done Pixie Dust ratings for 73 different shows. Not all of them. Like, I can guarantee you some of our early Pixie Dust ratings are not on the same calibration scale <laughs> as, our, as our recent Pixie Dust ratings, for most people anyway. Um, so we're going to be looking at all of our Pixie Dust ratings and looking at the ones that we know I screwed up on that one. This is what it really is. So if you have suggestions for us, please email us plus platoon at gmail.com. I said, we're going to be coming live next Wednesday at, uh, it'll be next Wednesday at 9 PM Eastern. We will be coming live and jump in, comment with us. Let us know what your ratings are. Let us know what we screwed up on. Let us know how I'm wrong because there was a stretch there where apparently I was wrong on a lot of them. We'll see how many of those I was really wrong on. <laughs> and then, yeah, come be a part of it. Come be a part of our 100th episode because you are Yay! a part of the community. So, Yay! Guys, we bring out shows each week, every Thursday on YouTube and all major podcasting platforms. Um, Guys, I cannot wait till next week. This has been a fun 99 shows yeah. and... We're going to see everyone next week and we're going to talk about what we got right, what we haven't got right yet. So I like it. Okay, guys, thank you so much. And we will see everyone next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Plus Platoon. Be sure to subscribe to the Plus Platoon podcast to keep getting great content each week. Then head over to Apple Podcast and leave those five-star reviews as they help make the Plus Platoon visible to even more Disney Plus fans. Also, go to YouTube and like and subscribe to the Plus Platoon channel where you can watch all future episodes live. If you have a question for the Plus Platoon, please send us an email to plusplatoon at gmail.com or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Plus Platoon. The Plus Platoon is a Disney Plus fan podcast and is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or the Disney Plus streaming service. All opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the individual hosts and in no way reflect the views of the Walt Disney Company. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode because the Plus Platoon is to be continued. Continued.